Luke Gallows teases a move to Impact Wrestling. Sammy Callahan loses to Ken Shamrock at Rebellion. An interview with Impact Wrestling gut check contestant Tyler Turva. All this and more coming up next on Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin right here on the Impact Lounge. Hey guys, this is the Saturday Night Delight, the dapper, dimple, dangerously delicious Mr. Young Fit, stupid, pretty Tyler Turva, and you're listening to Shooting Up North. Hey folks, thanks for joining me today. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. Uh, Luke Gallows. Luke Gallows uh, put a picture up on Twitter of him standing in an Impact Wrestling ring uh, when he was with Aces and Eights and uh, when he was DOC, when he was, w- when he was with Impact a few years ago. And uh, this this is creating a little bit of a buzz now. People are saying that you know uh, his he's um, Impact Wrestling is going to be his next stop. They said he's going to be his next stop. It's this Carl Anderson. And you say anything about Carl Anderson? They're just talking about um, of uh, Luke Gallows. Uh, but you got to think though if, uh, if uh, Luke Gallows is 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 going to go where Carl Anderson goes. Uh, so um, if if Luke Gallows is going to come to Impact Wrestling, you could basically assume that that Carl Anderson is is going to be uh, with him and they're going to remain as a tag team, which would be great. It would be fantastic if if Gallows and Anderson came to Impact Wrestling and uh, feuded with the North. I, I know Ethan Page. Uh, he w- was uh, doing a podcast, um, I believe, with Wrestling Inc. and he mentioned that he would he'd love uh, he love um, for Gallows and, and Anderson to come to Impact Wrestling. Uh, he also mentioned um, he would love for the revival as well. Uh, but uh, Gallows and Anderson, I mean, if they like, if they came to Impact Wrestling, like I said, that'd be terrific. Uh, I would say put him in a feud right away with the North. Um, is it going to happen? I I don't know. I can't say. Uh, I, I, I doubt it, to be honest. I, I really think that they're going to go back to New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, that's uh, the promotion that made them stars. But you never know. You never know what's going to happen in professional wrestling. Uh, they could very well end up in Impact Wrestling. Uh, All Elite Wrestling, I don't think they're going to go to All Elite Wrestling only because I, I, I believe that the Revival... Uh, another team I'd love to see in Impact Wrestling, but I really feel that the Vi- Revival will be signing uh, with All Elite Wrestling, and I don't, I don't really know if they're going to bring another WWE tag team in. Uh, so I'm guessing New Japan Pro Wrestling or or Impact Wrestling for for Gallows and and Anderson. Uh, it's funny though, you know, they put, he puts a picture up. And there, there's no, there was no. Um, no comment. He didn't write anything. He just put a picture of, picture of himself up standing in the Impact Wrestling ring. Uh, and uh, people kind of like, oh, he's going to Impact Wrestling. Uh, but uh, I think Carl Anderson also um, kind of, I think he put up a New Japan Pro Wrestling picture uh, recently as well. So uh, you don't know. You don't know where they're going to go. When everything goes back to normal, I think we're going to see some of these guys uh, start filling in the place. But, you know, Gallows and Anderson. Uh, I, 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 if, if I had the opportunity to sign them, if I was Scott Demore, I'd sign them right away. I think they would be uh, great additions to Impact Wrestling. But that uh, that remains to be seen. Um, love to see uh, see them against. Uh, oh, I would love to see them against Triple uh, XL. That would be a good team. That would be a good match. Have them uh, against uh, Larry D and AC Romero. Uh, so a lot, a lot of possibilities. A lot of possibilities for for uh, Gallows and Anderson. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens with them. Now let's let's go to Rebellion. Let's talk to, about Rebellion a little bit. Um, Sammy Callahan lost in the main event on night one to Ken Shamrock. Now let's think about this for a little bit. Let's think about this for a little bit. Sammy Callahan on the show uh, officially breaks away from OVE. He attacks OVE, who OVE, uh, Madman Fulton, Jake, and Dave Christ um, try to get involved in a match, and they they help uh, Sammy Callahan. They attack Ken Shamrock. Sammy Callahan's not having any of it, any of it, so he um, he attacks uh, OVE, takes them out, officially splits from OVE. He's on his own. He's on his own. So they created this character. Uh, this new character for Sammy Callahan, and he's on his own, no longer with OVE. Uh, so they take the match outside, and ultimately, Ken Shamrock defeats Sammy Callahan, gets him in the 
in the ankle lock, and Sammy Callahan uh, passes out. Uh, blood coming out of his mouth. There was a good effect there. And um, Ken Shamrock, uh, who is, I think, 56 years old, defeats defeats uh, Sammy Callahan. Now, Sammy Callahan, like I said, a uh, new character for Sammy Callahan, um, on his own, breaking away from OVE. Uh, character that, you know, that new character that, you know, you would think they would want to build up and uh, make uh, into a, a major character. But um, his first match as the new character, he loses to Ken Shamrock uh, on, on, a, on a major show. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to me. It doesn't make any sense. There's no way he should have lost that match to Ken Shamrock. When the match first began, I'm thinking, Sammy Callahan's going to win this match because it's a new character for Sammy Callahan. And uh, they want to build up this new character. And uh, Sammy Callahan, one of the top guys in Impact Wrestling. And uh, it's like, hey, it should be an interesting match. Uh, I wasn't too sure how long uh, Ken Shamrock was going to be able to go because, you know, like I said, he's near, nearing 60. And uh, But I was wrong. You know, Ken Shamrock, Ken Shamrock um, uh, was victorious. And I don't know what they're going to do. I don't know where, where, where they're going with this. Why, <laughs> why is... Why is it? I'm laughing because I think it's I think it's humorous, and I I, I um, don't know if anyone's going to share the uh, share my opinion with me. I'm sure there are a lot of people out there that are going to, but there's no way, no way, Ken Shamrock should have defeated Sammy Callahan. I mean, so what does Sammy Callahan what does Sammy Callahan go from here? You know, he he's lost his first match in, uh, so now if he goes into another feud, it's like uh, he's already lost to Ken Shamrock, uh, so um. It, it kind of takes the takes a little little bit of the spark away or the fire away from from um, from Sammy Callahan. And yes, Sammy Callahan can say, I, I think he already was on Twitter and he's like, I never tapped out, uh, I, I never quit, I passed out, so that's why I lost. So he could use that as as um, an excuse, uh, as a reasoning that uh, he didn't, didn't really uh, lose the match. But still, there's no way Scott Demore, Don Callis. Sammy Callahan should have won that match. He should have won that match. I, he's, uh, I'm sorry. I just got frustrated. I got frustrated because, uh, to me, Ken Shamrock is not a, not not a top guy. He's not the world's most dangerous man anymore. You know, maybe 20 years ago he was the world's most dangerous man. He's not the world's most dangerous man anymore. Uh, so stop making him seem like this killer professional wrestler. That that's seemingly unbeatable. I don't think he's lost a match since he's come back to Impact Wrestling. I could be wrong there, and if I'm wrong, I apologize. But I don't think he's lost a match since he's come back uh, to Impact Wrestling. Uh, but still, it's just to me, it was a little frustrating. And and OVE, oh, they lost again. Also, uh, Dave Krista took the loss. Uh, he was pinned. Uh, was it Dave? No, I think it was Jake Christ. I think Jake Christ uh, took the gore and. Um, and I was see whoever Jake or Dave. Regardless, uh, it was another loss for OVE. I was kind of hoping that they would that they would have won this match against uh, Rhino, Tommy Dreamer, and their surprise um, partner, mystery partner, uh, Crazy Steve. Uh, who, by the way, I was very excited to see because I was fully expecting Raven. Sabu, or maybe the Sandman, to be the the mystery partner, but uh, Crazy Steve was a nice surprise. Josh Matthews, on the other hand, didn't really sell it. Seemed like he didn't really care. That um, I shouldn't say that, but he he could have got a little more excited uh, when Crazy Steve um, was revealed as the mystery mystery partner. But uh, nonetheless, another another uh, loss for OVE. I uh, don't know if they're ever going to win another match while they're in Impact Wrestling. I don't know if they're 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 going to be leaving Impact Wrestling. That's why they're taking all these losses. But for goodness sake, please just give them a win. Let them win a match. For crying out loud, let OVE win once. I mean, Tommy Dreamer, Rhino. Okay, they're legends. They they've got multiple victories over OVE. They should have just let OVE have this one match. Let them just win this one match, please. Just one match. I just want OVE to win one match. They, they deserve it. They've been they've been with Impact Wrestling for 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 a while now. Yeah, you know, they're on a horrible losing streak. Let them win one match against Tommy Dreamer. 
and Rhino and whoever else is in the ring with them. Just, just let it let it happen. Let it happen. All right. I was uh, on um, on Facebook. I want to bring this um, bring this uh, one thing up on Facebook after Rebellion was over. And um, actually, as Rebellion's going on, Impact Wrestling is posting um, posting um, stuff up about the about the matches, about the card, uh, revealing who the winner is. Uh, and when, when Rebellion had ended, uh, they um, they again more posts were going up, and they were you know revealing who the winners were after Rebellion has happened. And there was one guy up on on, on Facebook who, who was getting was getting very upset. Because he's like, hey, Impact, <laughs> I haven't watched Rebellion yet. Stop giving away spoilers. And I'm thinking, what the hell is this guy? What the hell is this guy telling Impact Wrestling, uh, Impact Wrestling, the social media um, group that, uh, uh, the people in charge of social media for Impact Wrestling, what was he telling them to, to stop giving away spoilers? The, the event had happened. It was already televised. So they have every every right to to promote it and and put up clips and and reveal who won after the fact. It's not like you know this mat. It's not like the show was taped and they and they decide to give away the the winners uh, prior uh, to the show being aired. Um, again, and 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 dude, if if you're worried about seeing spoilers uh, for a show that's already been televised, here's an idea: stay off social media. No one forced you to go on social media to the Impact Wrestling page to see um, to see what's going on. If you know Rebellion's going on and you know you can't watch it, you'll stay off social media. I've done it. There was many shows that I haven't seen that have been uh, on pay-per-view or has been televised, and I don't know the results. And what you know what I do? You know what I do? I stay off social media. <laughs> I don't go on social media, so I don't see the results of a show that I want to see. And then after I watch it and see the results, then I go on social media. That's that's what you should do, my friend. Instead of getting on Impact Wrestling for posting results of a show that's already happened, that's already been televised. Stupid. It's dumb. Anyway. Anyway. All right, so let's uh, let's move along. If uh, if you're um, a fan of Impact Wrestling, odds are, and I hope odds are, that you've been following the latest edition of Gut Check, Impact Wrestling Gut Check. Uh, it was really good. I think there's four four episodes. Uh, they were really good. I was totally invested in it. I really enjoyed it. I think Impact Wrestling did a really good job this time around, and I hope we see uh, more um, Gut Checks. I can see this being a, a twice a year or, or a yearly thing. With that said, I had the opportunity to get together with one of the contestants, uh, the Saturday Night Delight, Tyler Turver, and we had a terrific conversation. We discussed Gut Check, uh, what went down at Gut Check. Uh, we discussed his career and many other things. Uh, so I'm not going to make you wait any longer. Let's get on with it. My interview with the Saturday Night Delight, Tyler Turver. Very happy to welcome Tyler Turva. Welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you so much for having me, man. I'm super my excited. My pleasure, man. And I forgot to I forgot to say I forgot to say you're also the Crossfire uh, Wrestling Heavyweight Champion as well. So I just want to get that in there as well. Absolutely. So how's everything going? How are you holding up during this pandemic, man? How wild is this thing? <laughs> like I would, cause it's been today marks a month for me that I've been basically only going to the grocery store and it's so weird. And I've watched so much wrestling. I'm, I want to say like, I don't want to say I'm sick of watching wrestling, but I'm getting to that point. Cause I've watched so much. Okay, okay man. Yeah. Cause I, I've been home for about, about four weeks. Cause I, uh, I drive a truck and I've been, none of my, none of my uh, customers want me to come on site with the truck. So I've been home. I've been doing the same thing. I've been watching a lot of wrestling, I've been catching up on a lot of, a lot of, uh, old Japan and uh, a lot of independent wrestling. Uh, I have, um, IWTV, which is a great, uh, a great, um, service and I've been catching up as well. Uh, so yeah, so it's a good thing to catch up on a lot of wrestling, man. Absolutely. I know I started watching with like a WrestleMania a day. And then after after a week, I was like, OK, I need to change this up. This is getting to be too much. 
Yeah, no, I saw you posted on uh, on Twitter the the Bret Hart Mr. Perfect match uh, from SummerSlam uh, from '92. That was a that was a phenomenal match. I remember I watched that. I remember popping so much when Bret Hart uh, won the title. Oh yeah, and I like like yeah, it totally takes me back. I was like five when that match happened, and like I like I had it I had it on tape as well, so I basically wore that tape out. <laughs> Yeah, it was a great match, man. Great match. So let's uh, let's get the gut check. Uh, I know uh, you were a contestant in um, uh, the latest edition of Gut Check. Uh, so how how did you become a contestant, and what was the process of you um, getting onto that show? Uh, so for me, like my process, um, I feel like it was a little bit different than everybody else's. So I ended up actually going down to a tryout in Vegas uh, for Impact. This was in. Uh, in September of 2019. So yeah, this would have okay. been just over like six months ago. So I went down and did, uh, and did a tryout there. And at that tryout, that's when I found out that they were actually doing, they were going to be doing like a bit of a tryout again and looking at people in Windsor. And so I ended up doing both. So after doing the first one, so after doing the getting looked at in, in Vegas, I ended up having an explosion match against uh, TJP. So that was okay. actually like the first match that I had ever had uh, for Impact. And then from there, I ended up doing, uh, they had like a tryout. And so someone was going, I think they were, I think there was someone um, that was potentially going to be going to Japan out of the tryout in Windsor. No one did go to Japan, but that's where they ended up picking like a lot of guys uh, out of this Windsor tryout. There was guys coming, guys and girls coming from all over. So there was even anywhere from like, toronto a bit north of toronto and then all the way down into like kentucky and stuff like that so the people were coming from um all around so we we're doing like matches and different drills and so I, I ended up being selected um out of that camp that's great so what was what was the atmosphere like uh say on day one uh they down to seven uh they have seven contestants uh was it was it was it was it excitement in the air was it stressful was it intense what was the atmosphere like on on the first day there it was really stressful. Like everyone was really rigid. No one, like I found like a lot of us just couldn't loosen up. Like we just didn't know what to expect. We didn't know, uh, for one, we didn't know what we were even doing that day or at all. Like there was, there's nothing's mapped out. Like you're literally just like showing up, you have your gear bag, you're wearing nice clothes and you're like, okay, I'm here trying to get a job and winning a spot. So, um, now, I know each episode was about uh, 14, 15 minutes long. Uh, there was about uh, four episodes. But how much um, how much time during each day did you guys train? I know it wasn't 14, 15 minutes, but how – was it an all-day thing? Was it you train for two hours, or how long did you, um, did you train during the day? So we ended up shooting uh, four different days in Windsor. Uh, so, yeah, so we had four days in Windsor shooting uh, within that uh, – they're, they're even like we're filming promos and stuff like that as well. And then there was a couple, there was actually two other days as well. So there was one in Dayton, Ohio, and then there was also another one in uh, Detroit, Michigan. So some of the, okay. you'll notice there's, there's six man tag match. Um, yeah. Where it's, uh, it's three of the OVW guys. And then against me, Clayton Gaines and Jackson stone. So that, that yeah. actually took place in Detroit. And then there was another match. Um, I don't know if it made it to air, but there was another match that happened in Dayton, Ohio. And so it was uh, Akbar, Jackson Stone, and I against the three OVW guys. So there ended up being like six okay. film. So for yeah, so there were six days of filming, four in Windsor, Ohio, and then De and then Detroit, and then uh, then from there they selected uh, the two the two finalists. So what were your thoughts? What were your thoughts on Johnny Bravo? I know uh, on Impact he's um, with uh, Tower Valkyrie and he's kind of a goofball, but he seemed like he was a pretty uh, pretty intense trainer. Uh, well, what what are your thoughts on Johnny Bravo? Man, Johnny Bravo is so intense, but he has like every right to be. <laughs> so yeah, like the guy that you see on the guy that you see on TV is just like you said, like a goofball, super entertaining like hilarious for like in every little thing that he does so funny and like Johnny Bravo has been around 
in like in wrestling and train like wrestling training like he hasn't i believe someone told me that he's only missed one practice in the like 20 something years that he's been training and okay. so like so like he so like he's been around he's also been around so many different uh federations and even like around border um which we call port uh, around border city and he's been through like yeah he's been through like a lot of different things he's also he was eventually like a ref and he's done a lot of things in impact so like yeah he as a trainer he was so intense <laughs> like which you can see in some of the episodes, right? Because he, yeah, oh yeah, he's giving everyone the gears, like he's telling it exactly Absolutely, how it yeah. is. And so you're th- like, but as one of the contestants, you're thinking the exact same thing. Like in my head, I was like, how is this guy be? standing up the yeah. wrong way? Like I'm like, how, like I completely understand what Bravo, like why he was so intense with things, like because that's that's what wrestling training is, though. Like for me, that's how. Like I was brought into that same atmosphere when I started training. Yeah, I, I kind of lost you for a little bit there. Or there's a little bit of poor connection. Okay. I think you were you were discussing. Um, you mentioned something about Clayton Gaines getting up the wrong way. I, oh, sorry, I, I wanted to. I want to. I want to ask you about that because I'm a fan. I'm not a wrestler, so I don't really understand what goes on in the ring. I I enjoy watching you guys, but maybe you could um you could um help me understand what why getting up right the swinging right instead of swinging left why why is that the wrong way uh there because there's you never swing left okay if there's actually like depending on depending on different styles like some guys do but that's like not part of a north american style okay I, I just uh, I didn't understand it. it. It seemed like uh, Johnny Bravo was was dead serious about that, man. I mean, he said it's, it's first. I think he said it's first day shit, man. You're getting up the wrong way. Uh, but uh, yeah, actually, did they ever find out? Did they ever find out who took Tony Gunn's picture? By the way, I meant I wanted to ask you. I have no clue. I was trying to figure that out because they like because they were grilling us on it. Like Bravo was grilling us on it in the in the ring, and like yeah. I really can't remember i did if i were to suspect though i'd say it was one of the twins okay but but it definitely wasn't the time ty- what definitely wasn't you though you didn't oh, God, no. that's no. <laughs> okay <laughs> no, well, well, if i would have took the picture i would have went in it with them and just took a selfie <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> so what was your thoughts about that whole situation um with one with the uh, tony gun first spinning in the ring and then uh taking the picture what what um what did you think about that whole situation? Well, he spit on me. Like I he was spit the one on that you. Was... I thought he spit in the ring. Okay. Yeah, he spit in the ring, but like he spit on me as well because I was the one that wrestled him in that match. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, I remember being pissed. Like I rolled out of the ring and the, like the cameras were on him, but I remember being pissed off and I tried actually like going over and everyone like blocked me from it. And so, yeah, like I. I don't know. I, uh, that's, that's disrespect 101 in our industry. Sure. Like you just don't, you just don't spit on the mat, especially when everyone, like everyone, like we're, that's the only ring that we have. We're not, it's not like we're in a facility where there's like three or four different rings, but yeah, he, uh, <laughs> He got a lot of shit for that. <laughs> yeah, no, I know. I, I, yeah, I can tell. Just tell when he, uh, Johnny Bravo brought you, he brought you all in the ring and he had you made, made everybody look up to the ceiling. I was like, oh, crap. Johnny Bravo was pissed. But, uh, but um, yeah, I just was wondering if they ever, uh, they ever found out. I'm sure, uh, I'm sure Tony Gunn knows who did it, but he wasn't, uh, he wasn't giving up, um, giving up the person. Well, um, I was like to go with what, like, I was pissed off at Tony Gunn for the whole spitting incident, though, because, like we all had to get out of the ring and do squats. So like we did yeah, hundreds yeah. of squats while he just stood there, but he's the one that did it, but we got punished. So like, even after doing all these squats, we're then having to do like run all these drills when like, like some of the guys legs were just like given out and whatnot because we had done a few hundred squats. So, <laughs> and then he only had to do a hundred outside the ring and then came in and did drills. So you almost wish you did spit in the ring because <laughs> then you only had to do 100 squats. Yeah, there you go. So are you, are you still holding a uh, little bit of a grudge against Tony Gunn or is that all in the past? No, that's all in the past. And that's like, okay. that's also just like the second you roll out of a ring and, you, and you're done a match, like you're done with, you're done with whatever happened. Like, 
All right. Fair enough, man. So you were runner-up uh, to uh, Jackson Stone. Um, how disappointed were you when uh, when um, they announced Jackson Stone as the winner? Um, I, I was pretty disappointed. I I had prepared myself for if I was going to win or if I wasn't going to win, and so so yeah, like I remember, like in the moment, I'm I was really proud of how I handled myself in it because if you even like look at the footage, like. I don't skip a beat and right away I just make sure that I like congratulate him right away and made sure that, yeah, that he was okay. And that like he knew that he deserved it. So, but to say I was disappointed, absolutely. Like the next, like I had thought about it quite a bit over the next couple of days and decompressing when, cause that was all in Atlanta. So coming home from Atlanta, like it kind of, like the last thing you want to do is wait to go home. Like you just want to go home. So I was fortunate sure. though. I, I had a match the next sure. day because the, okay. the day that after the day that they told us, I actually had a match the next day and ended up, it was one of those matches where like, I remember just working my ass off because I was like, you're bitter, right? Like, like I, everyone wants a, an impact wrestling contract. And, and if they don't, sure. they wouldn't be there. Right. So, so of yeah, really did suck. Um, but I'm just really glad that I was able to have a match the next day so that I could like basically just like not shrug it off, but essentially just try to get over it a little quicker. Cause the worst is when something like that happens and then you have, you don't have a match until like a week from then. Like that's even worse. Yeah, no, I gotcha. No, I understand. Uh, but Johnny Bravo on Facebook, I think he posed that he thinks you'll be uh, an impact one day. Uh, I personally think that you'll be an impact one day as well. Uh, do you think you'll be an impact wrestling uh, anytime soon? Well, first off, thank you for that. I appreciate that. And uh, you're, you're, well, you're welcome. I, I really like, I think that I've shown, I do like to answer it straight up. Like I do, I do think that I have a really good chance at being an impact one day. So like I did get really good feedback that there's, there is quite a few things that they do like about me. I know, I know that I definitely need to uh, be able to just show even more personality because I am a person with a lot of personality, but even watching everything back, it doesn't come across that way. And I think part of that though, too, is uh, like a lot of the situation is super high stressful, right? Like you're, you're in there with like, you're literally only wrestling guys that are competing for the same job as you. And so a lot of guys, a lot of guys don't want to work as hard. Like that's how I felt with some of it. Like some guys aren't, aren't trying to make you look good and then vice versa. So that's one thing that I've always kind of prided myself on is like win or like win or lose. I'm out there to just bust my ass. And so I think that's one reason why, um, I could potentially have a future uh, with impact. Well, like I said, I think I definitely think that uh, you'd be a great fit with uh, with Impact Wrestling. It's a scenario that I that I was thinking about. Uh, I know Jackson Stone um, when when it comes back and he has his debut match. My scenario was you run into the ring and disrupt his debut match and take out Jackson Stone, setting up a feud between you and uh, and Jackson Stone because you're you're upset that you were the runner up and you felt that you should have won. Uh, that's that's how that's if I was writing the script, that's how I would write it. H- how do you feel about something like that? I love it. How about how about we add to it and I take a chair to his leg and keep chopping him down like I did in the match. <laughs> there you go, man. There you go. If uh, if Don Callis, Scott Demore, if you're listening, that's this is how you could bring in uh, Tyler Turver. Uh, how you do it. Bag wrestling. How you do it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, actually, I was watching Explosion. Uh, actually, in winter, I, I unfortunately I normally go to the winter tapings, but and I'm a little disappointed that that I missed your match with um, with El Reverso because I, I wasn't in Windsor um, during those tapings. Uh, but yeah. I watched the match and um, terrific match against El Reverso. I am a big fan of El Reverso. Uh, one thing I want to ask though, during the match, you 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 were on your knee and you blew a kiss to somebody. Uh, who were you blowing <laughs> a kiss to? If you remember that moment. Oh, I blew the kiss like to the like to the hard camera, right? Oh uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And that was for my girlfriend who's at home. Okay, <laughs> little bricky <laughs> cookie, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, that always, was a good moment. But. Always got to give that little subtlety to make her know that I'm thinking about her. <laughs> there you go, man. There you go. Well, um, 
if if you ever uh, feel like looking to the camera and blowing me a kiss, you know that's that I I would perfectly welcome that. That would be perfectly okay. If you if you ever want to dedicate a a kiss to me, that's that that would be great, man. Deal. If if you see me do two winks after, that'll be the one. The one wink is for Brooke. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so I'll be looking for those two winks then. Exactly. <laughs> when you take out Jackson. When you take out Jacks and Stone, I'll be looking for those two wings, wings man. Absolutely. Um, so let's go back to the start. Let's go back to the start for you. Um, when did you first realize? Uh, and I believe you've been wrestling since 2008. But when when did you first realize that you wanted to uh, pursue a career in professional wrestling? Um, almost a year before uh, 2008. So like in 2007, um, I had graduated from college, finished college. My girlfriend with me had broken up. Uh, or sorry, my girlfriend, my college girlfriend had broken up with me at the time. And I had started, one of my buddies brought me to the gym and I started working out. And so I remember like, just thinking to myself, like, Hey, like, I, I think I want to give wrestling a try. And so I started watching wrestling when I was like two years old. So that was something that me and my family did. Like my dad would make homemade pizzas and I'd be woken up from a nap. And as a family, we would watch Saturday night's main event. So it runs real like wrestling. So wrestling runs real deep in terms of like, that was like what my whole family did. Like I have two sisters and even a lot of pictures that I'll post every once in a while. Like my sisters wearing one sister I'll have on like an ultimate warrior shirt or the rockers. And then another, my other sister loved miss Elizabeth. And then I'm wearing macho man and Hulk Hogan stuff like all the time. And then the odd ultimate warrior stuff too. So like wrestling goes really deep into like just how long it's been around like in my life. And like, yeah, I started watching tape super young. All my fi- like all my toys as a kid were figures and then and hockey cards. And like, yeah, at like 2007, I was like, hey, I think I'm going to do this. And so I had actually gone out west and I was living on my buddy's couch and I kept going to this Internet cafe. And at this cafe, I kept researching wrestling schools. And so I was in Edmonton, but the all the closest schools were like in Calgary. And so I. I decided like, nah, I'm just going to go home and try and find a, a wrestling school near home. And so I ended up training uh, out of a place called Pro Wrestling Extreme, excuse me, at the time. And so my trainer ended up being, um, his name's Danger Boy Derek Wild. And so he was a big, okay. he's trained a lot of guys in the Ontario scene. Uh, but he was, he actually wrestled on two or three different uh, of the, TNA only pay-per-views from way back when they were at the asylum. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. So like he was, I think he's in a six man. I watched him in a six man tag that CM punks in from like 2004, 2005. But yeah, so he's, so he goes like, he goes way back, but he also like, he's fine tuned and trained a lot of Ontario wrestlers from guys that have trained from 2000. And then I was like his last student. So, so yeah, I finished training and, uh, I trained, I started training in like January of 2008. And then I had my first match, literally eight practices after my, my first practice. So I had, yeah, it was eight practices in, and then I had a match, uh, March 22nd, I think it was of 2008. And then since then, oh, so what do you, what do you, uh, I was to say, what do you remember about the first match? Um, wait, how, how nervous were you uh, heading to, heading to the ring for the first time? Oh, it was the weirdest thing. Like I remember being like the building was just this old rundown building. There was about 42 guys and girls on this show. And like, I had never really been to an indie wrestling show. So I was like, I didn't even know what to expect. I had like uh, three or four of my buddies. This show was in Hamilton. So three or four of my buddies actually made the track and uh, to come to the show. <laughs> and yeah, I remember like, just being so nervous and <coughs> excuse me. And so I was actually in a match where it was me and three other guys taking on one guy named Samoa Mo, which is now big Ben Ortman's. And so he, he was, so he's like, he was wearing a mask at the time. He was actually wearing a mask, the Christian fishnet leather shirt. <laughs> he was wearing like <laughs> Samoa Joe, Samoa Joe, biker trunks and then okay and then like knee pads and kick pads and so and then we came out we ended up eventually eventually me and the the three other guys 
like pin them one, two, three, and then we unmask them. So like I unmasked Samoa Mo and like, I remember there was like no reaction <laughs> in the audience. And I remember like celebrating and just being told the whole time, like, all right, so you're going to take this mask off and the crowd's going to go nuts. And I remember taking the mask off, <laughs> celebrating and realizing I'm celebrating to like no reaction. <laughs> And that was like my main welcome to pro wrestling. <laughs> there you go, man. There you go. Um, you said uh, Ben Ortman's. That's the uh, crossbody pro wrestling Ben Ortman's you were talking about, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, have Have you wrestled on any um, crossbody uh, shows? I did one. I did a tag okay. team match. It was uh, I'm trying to think. I think I did one two years ago. Okay. Yeah, it was just a tag match. I'm, I can't think of – I think I tagged with uh, Relentless John Atlas, and I can't remember – I know I wrestled Jake O'Reilly. I can't remember who his partner was, though, because he's had a couple different ones. Right. But yeah, that's – I know. I'm just curious. I know a crossbody is a, a nice, good little promotion uh, out in Kitchener. Um, really enjoy it. Um, just wonder if, uh, if you've ever been out there. You, um, I'm sure uh, I'm sure we'll see you on uh, one of those shows um, in the future uh, once wrestling comes back, man, because I, I know you're all over all over Ontario. Uh, and um, you mentioned some of the wrestlers that you've you've enjoyed watching growing up. Uh, is there – if you could pick just one favorite, uh, all-time favorite wrestler, uh, who, who would you choose? Oh, one all-time favorite. So, like, I could only watch one person. Uh, if, if, if you could just choose one wrestler as your all-time favorite, I'll, 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 I'll as you're thinking, I'll give you mine. Mine's Rowdy Roddy Piper, uh, but um, I'll, uh, I'll let you think of yours. If, if you want to come back to the question, if you can't think of just one, that's that's fine. That's fine. If I'm picking just one, I would have to go like. I always have to go with Hulk Hogan because that was that was who my favorite my first favorite wrestler ever was. So yeah, I'd probably pick Hulk Hogan. But Rick Rude's a close Rick Rude and Macho Man Randy Savage. Those are two that are really high up there for me. And and speaking of um, Hulk Hogan and Randy Savage, I I want to uh, wish you guys a happy National Siblings Day. As I saw I saw the picture up on Twitter. Are you uh, Hogan and Savage? I didn't know you guys were brothers, man. I didn't know you guys were were related. Yeah, the, I'm the long lost third mega power. No one, no one introduced me though. We didn't make it to TV. They like they had a great run, but yeah. Hey, sometimes there's a long lost brother. Uh, I, was just, I was looking at that the other day. That's funny. That's a great picture. Uh, that, you put, putting yourself next to Savage and Hogan and happy, uh, happy natural Southern state. That was that was that was really cool, man. Oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> So, do you have any good road stories uh, early on in your career? I know uh, I, I speak to a lot of wrestlers, and they have um, some like funny road stories uh, that they that they like to share. Um, any anything ever happened to you that was uh, uh, kind of humorous um, early on early on in your career? I remember, yeah, like I was maybe five years in, six years in, and we had just finished a show. I think it was up in like Collingwood. And so we're driving all these back roads. And at the time I drove with Highlander, uh, Robbie McAllister, uh, who used to be a WWE. And so, and he's one of my really good buddies. And so we're driving back from the show. And then all of a sudden we just see all these sparks in the, like in a bit, we hear a thud and just see, and then he looks in the rear view mirror and sees all these sparks. And so we pull over and we lost a ring post from the ring truck <laughs> and so like so we so he's like okay so we do so we do the loop around so we get off at the next exit go back around and like we he puts on the four ways and like it's pitch black at night and we're like we're go we're only driving like 15 20 kilometers an hour on the shoulder of the road and like we couldn't find it like we we took at least like half an hour <laughs> of driving like a three kilometer stretch or four kilometer stretch. And like, we couldn't find one of the ring posts. And then, <laughs> and then, so when we're pulled over, one of the, he lost a wheel on the trailer. <laughs> so we're like, what the, we're like, what the F is going on? And so we, he ended up having to, uh, Oh, I'm trying to think of the name of the band. One of his good buddies, they're a traveling band that have, 
and I just ran into them a co- like a year and a half ago and they played the Highlander theme. I forget what I for, I forget what it was, but at one I think it was at like a yeah. raw or something or a house show. I can't remember, but yeah, that so they they play the Highlander theme song and that like anyways, these guys in this band, they ended up driving cuz they were on a gig 2 hours away from us. So they came and we were able to instead we put their music stuff in the back of the truck that we were in and then we put the ring in their van and then had to drive he had to drive his trailer on three wheels the whole way back but yeah so we lost a ring post and a and a and a trailer <laughs> and a trailer tire all in the same <laughs> like but we couldn't find like, like, either of them <laughs> like how did the how did the ring post fall, fall out of the van though? Was it sticking out of the back? How did how did it fall out of how did it fall out of the van? Well, it was like a fifth wheel trailer or whatever, like a oh, okay, a, oh, okay, yeah. I got gotcha, you, I got gotcha. you. So, but it was under a tarp that was that had all like that was tied down, like yeah, we because he used to we used his ring like every show every weekend for like four years but but yeah but he lost a ring post so then he had to make another one <laughs> so we did so he couldn't even do the ring the next day because <laughs> he only had three posts oh man that's a good story man i'm just thinking uh, and you, and you, when you can't find i mean how could you the ring post is a that's a pretty large item though it must have rolled down the hill or something that, that you can that you can find it <laughs> It must have like going around a bend or something, but like yeah, <laughs> it was maybe, weird. Or maybe somebody I, found it, just picked it up, and yeah, I've got yeah. another story too. If you want another one, yeah, no, go yeah, go ahead, man, go ahead. All right, so so I'm at a private. I'm wrestling at a. I was booked to wrestle uh, at a at a brewery for a travel company that would be like an Expedia type of company that does like online types of bookings. And so all the people that are coming, uh, it was a dress up as your favorite wrestler party. So there was like 125 guests at a brewery in Toronto and everyone was to show up as their favorite wrestler. And so you show up at this place, there's a ring in the middle and then it's an open bar. So, Everyone has like two hours of just mingling and drinking before the start or before the show starts. And there's uh, two matches set for the show. And so there was going, so the one, so there's the one promoter, um, he wrestles, I forget, I forget his, uh, his name. So he wrestled some guy and they just like for like two minutes and then that, and then like that was the opening. And then, and then there was two matches. And so, the next match was the honky tonk man against Highlander, Robbie McAllister. And then the last match was the main event. It was Tyler Turva against Brutus, the barber beefcake. Okay. And so Brutus, the barber beefcake shows up in jeans, white running shoes and a black under armor shirt. And they don't okay. have his bag. So they lost his bag on the plane. So that's his gear for tonight. (laughs) (laughs) And because he's there two, like he was there two hours before the show and this whole place is an open bar. Brutus and Barber Beefcake's been drinking for two hours (laughs) before. So hockey comes out. So hockey and Highlander go out, boom, have their match. They come to the back honky tonk, man, (coughs) excuse me, hits the shake, rattle and roll place goes crazy two two of the people were actually dressed as hockey tonk so they're super pumped so then we go down to the ring and these like there's no chairs so everyone's actually like on the ring and so they're like hitting the mat while everything's going on and so it was actually like one of the rowdiest matches that i've had so i start wrestling brutus the barber beefcake who's just in white running shoes jeans and a black under armor shirt (laughs) <laughs> next thing you know six minutes later he puts in the sleeper i get i pass out he grabs it he grabs the clippers cuts the mohawk off the back or the faux hawk off the back of my head throwing hair everywhere and like 125 drunk people just go ape shit wow brutus beefcake struts and cuts around and doesn't have real scissors <laughs> or his like hedge clippers or any of his gear <laughs> That was the main event. It was great. And I come to the back and honky tonk man uh, was like, 
shooting the shit with me and just saying like just giving me lots of praise so that, that was a pretty fun day <laughs> Hey, cool. That's cool. <laughs> Good stories, man. Uh, must have been, it must have been a thrill being in the ring with um with Brutus Beefcake. I'm sure you 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 you've watched him on TV, and then to be in the ring with him must have been a, a just an absolute thrill, man. Oh, it was so cool. Especially when like like halfway through, I'm like, wow, I'm punching Brutus Beefcake in the face right now. This is pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> And then it's like, oh, and I just watched him drink like three vodkas before he came out. <laughs> <laughs> speaking, of, speaking of the WWE, you did have a tryout match, I believe, in Ottawa a few years ago, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. But you, I think it was a completely different name that that we you, they that they gave you or you were using at the time. Uh, I hope I'm correct on that, but uh, I think uh, I think I think you did have a match in the WWE. Yep, I had a match on uh, SmackDown against Kurt okay. Hawkins. And uh, Vance Archer, who's now Lance okay. Archer, yeah. and uh, uh, yeah. yeah, that was in that was on SmackDown. Yeah, you're right though. That was in Ottawa, Mar. Or was it May 21? May May 21, I think 2010. So that's actually that's gonna be 10 years okay. ago next month. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. But yeah, so yeah, I had a trial match. It was it was sweet. Arn Anderson was actually like the agent of my match too. So that was pretty cool meeting Arn Anderson. Oh man, he's he's definitely one of the best, man. Uh, that must have been an absolute thrill uh, to to meet um, to meet Double A. That uh, I, mean, I grew up watching him. I was a big fan of Arn Anderson, man. He's awesome. Absolutely. And his his podcast is my favorite one that I listen to too. Of all those ones. Wait, what? Second his favorite. podcast is your favorite. Okay, there you go. Second, <laughs> Second favorite. Second favorite. I'm kidding. I said I'm of kidding. all those other ones. <laughs> yeah no that's that's true that's true and i i i, I got you. No, i understand I, that's cool and i know i know i know deep down inside this is your favorite podcast to listen to so absolutely okay so uh so when did you become the saturday night delight uh, i love that nickname uh and i love um the the, the logo um it's take on the saturday night's main event logo uh but so when did uh when did you uh, adopt that nickname I want to say it's been five or six years now. I think five, something like that. Okay. Yeah, I was always like tricked out. I used to be tricked out Tyler Turbo and then just felt like I think I had gotten an injury and then just decided I was like, nah, like it's time to switch it up. I was like, and everyone loves Saturday night. That's what most like when you think of people from a small town, that's what they're looking forward to. They're living their whole week for Saturday night. So that's why I was like, well, I got to be the Saturday night delight. <laughs> you know, man, that is a great, and that name fits you perfectly, man. Um, and I want to, I want to go back to the the El Reverso match uh, on um, Explosion uh, when you had the, um, uh, the I, I guess you could call it a cape, um, and you were holding yeah. up and you were sp- spinning around. That was uh, that was a great visual, man. Uh, it, it fits you perfectly, man, because you you are the Saturday Night Delight, and. Um, uh, I when when you when you do come to uh, Impact Wrestling, I hope they uh, let you keep that name, man. I hope so too. Thank you very much. Yeah, my pleasure, man. My pleasure. So you've been in the ring with many top stars: uh, Tyson Dukes, Cody Deaner. Uh, by the way, I I I, I posted a match yesterday at uh, Crossfire Wrestling. Phenomenal match against Cody Deaner. Uh, I know you've met him many many times, uh, and I think you I think you liked the the post I put up yesterday. Uh, but um, that was a tremendous match with Cody Deaner. Uh, but do you have a favorite opponent? And uh, and and. If you do have a favorite opponent, why would that be your favorite opponent? Well, you just named my favorite opponent. It's definitely okay. Cody. Yeah. There you go. Tyson Dukes is a close second, though. Tyson Dukes is a close second. Like, both those guys are just so good. And, uh, yeah. Now, Diener, I've wrestled more than anyone I've ever wrestled. And we've had a lot of feuds literally all over Ontario and main evented, like, pretty much every federation with, um, with him and I. And so, yeah, his... The matches with him, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it just seems like magic happens. Absolutely, and again, for now, I, I I watched two last night. Uh, you and uh, Cody Dieter, and both were were fantastic. The other one was the the Kem Valley uh, wrestling match, uh, which was a tremendous one as well. It it just seems like when you two get together, it's like you're perfect opponents for one another. It just like you said, magic happens when you guys get together, man. Well, thank you, thank you. That Kem Valley one was fun too. <laughs> Oh, I was just going to say, Kemp Valley, my, uh, I actually had some family there in the front row, too, and they had never been to a wrestling show. 
And so that was, that was neat for them. I, my uncle's actually like the city counselor of that, uh, was it Sarnia? So, yeah, so he was sitting. Uh, Sarnia, yeah. Yeah, so they thought that was pretty cool. That's cool, That's cool man. Um, I want to talk about uh, your match against Kobe Durst uh, was for um, Courage Pro. Uh, where you got injured, you you, you did uh, you stomped on his chest and then uh, your leg just like twisted and you just fell to the ground and you got injured. Uh, now I, I know I know why you, you twisted your knee. Uh, it was, looked really ugly when I was watching it. But what do you think went wrong there? I mean, it just seemed like a a move that you perform a million times, man. But it just seemed like that one time, yeah, it just uh, just messed your knee up, man. Yeah, I still don't even know. Like I literally just jumped up, stomped him in the chest, and then my knee just like snapped back. So the, yeah, it, I literally couldn't, couldn't walk, couldn't stand, couldn't anything. So that was a fun drive home that day. <laughs> Thank God for cruise control. on <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It, uh, like I said, I don't know if you watched the match, but it looked really ugly when he came down and I knew you could see right away that oh, he can't, he can't continue. And I immediately saw the referee came over and you were like, I can't, it's, it's over. Uh, you didn't even think about it. Just immediately matches over, matches over. And, uh, and, um, uh, but, uh, did, how long did it take for you to recover from that, from that? Um, it took a while. I still wrestled through it being hurt though. I just, I missed the, sh- I missed the show the weekend after. And then I think I only waited two weeks, but then, but I couldn't, couldn't run, couldn't anything, but I was still wrestling. So just working smarter, not harder. <laughs> so you, so even with the injury, you still went into the ring then? Oh yeah. Yep. Okay. I, uh, yeah, I couldn't even straighten my, I couldn't straighten my leg for a month, but I, okay. yeah, I think it was close to a month before I could get it fully straight. But, uh, yeah, it took quite Yikes. a while. Yep. So, Yikes, yeah, but, but like guys wrestle through injuries all the time. Cause there's a difference okay. between being injured and being hurt. And so if you're hurt, you can't go and you like, you can't do anything. But if you're injured, like, like I don't need, like just because my knee, my knees bugging me doesn't mean like the rest of my body's broken. Like I can still punch and kick and I can still like throw an elbow. Like I can still do everything. It just takes, yeah, it just takes a a lot, like being a lot more artistic in like the way that I move and just smarter in how I do everything so that I can still uh, make sure that I'm giving up a good fight when I'm in there. All right, man. There you go. I'm glad you're able to go uh, return to the ring uh, right after that because, like I said, it looked really ugly, and I thought, oh gosh, I, I wonder how long he was out for that one. Uh, but uh, glad you were back. Uh, went right back into the ring, man. Uh, and hopefully, nobody uh, slapped a, a Boston crab or a figure four on you um, while you, while you were uh, while you were injured. <laughs> oh no, I made sure there was none of that. I was rolling them up into a small package. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Now, do you have anybody that um, that you would say is a dream opponent that you've that you've never faced? I mean, if you could pick one person, one wrestler to be a dream opponent, um, who would that who would that wrestler be? Would it be would it be Hulk Hogan, or would it be somebody else? Oh no, it'd be Hulk Hogan. It has to be Hulk Hogan because okay. you like everyone should only want to wrestle like the the top star ever. Okay, the Rock would be sweet too, but. Yeah, I would say, uh, I don't know. I think it's a toss up between Hogan or The Rock, but everyone should only want to wrestle the best. It's not about wrestling like who you think you'd have a good match with or what might gel. Like, like I want to know what it feels like to stand in the ring and Hulk Hogan comes out. <laughs> now, but, speaking of Hulk Hogan and The Rock, did you uh, re- WrestleMania uh, 18, uh, Hulk Hogan versus The Rock in Toronto? Were you as upset as I was that Hulk Hogan didn't win that match? Uh, yes and no. Okay. Like, yeah, like, well, at the time, like, I was 18-ish. So, you are you end up being torn because you're like, oh, well, I like The Rock, though. <laughs> you know? But I, I know what you mean. Like, even watching it back now, I'm like, ah, oh, I really wanted to see him drop the leg and win it. <laughs> but yeah, no, because I just I just wanted to see that place absolutely become unglued when when Hulk Hogan uh, Hulk Hogan gets a three count on the Rock. Like every time I watch the match, I know the result, but inside I'm thinking, please let Hogan win this time. Let Hogan win this time. This is what. Absolutely, and like I had never seen. I didn't go to WrestleMania 
18, my buddies went and like, I just refused to go. Cause my whole thing is I'm only going to go to a WrestleMania if I'm in it. That was one of my things okay. that I promised myself when I, even when I was in like high school, but I went, okay. so the next year I went to rock Hogan two in Montreal and I ended up seeing, cause I had never seen Hogan live. And like when Hogan comes out, like that place was insane. That was at no way out. I believe. <laughs> oh, yeah. And like, man, there's nothing like a Hulk Hogan entrance. Like that, like literally like, you're everyone's the, the the age when they first saw him they're immediately that age <laughs> like i felt like i just morphed into four-year-old me or three-year-old me i was like this yeah is insane. well you're you're gonna you're gonna call me old right now but the first time i ever saw hulk hogan live was nassau coliseum in new york because i'm from new york city 1980 yeah. against andre the giant that's the first time i ever saw hulk hogan live and, that's um, right back. so was yeah, he in- did he have on white gear then? He was wearing his white gear, and uh, he was, of course, a heel at the time. And he did body slam Andre during the match, uh, but Andre did get the, did get the win. But um, first time I ever uh, actually, um, um, it's a free, I'll I'll tell you a little story. It was uh, we had fourth row um, from the ring, and we were on the aisle where the. Um, where the heels come out, because at, at that time, um, the faces and the heels came out from different entrances. So I was I was right near the heel entrance, and um, the wrestler was coming out. And Sergeant Slaughter was wrestling Tony Gurria that night, and Sergeant Slaughter was coming past me, and somebody screamed out, F you, Sarge, you suck. And Sarge, <laughs> and Sergeant Slaughter turned around, and then this guy, in this, this fan must have been drunk or high or whatever, threw a punch. Uh, the punch went right over my head. I was I was nine years old at the time, right <laughs> over my head, and he and it, and it hit Slaughter in the arm, and Slaughter grabbed the guy, and security jumped in, and and I was shaking. My dad had to pull me out of the way, and um, That's and awesome. after that, my dad was like, "Do you do you want to do you want to leave? Do you want to go up to to the seats at the at the top?" I said, "Yeah, I'm scared. Uh, let's get out of here." And I regret that to this day because Hulk Hogan, right? I went when I was at the top. Hulk Hogan coming by stopped right at the empty seat where I was sitting, and he looked to the crowd. I would have been literally like two inches away from Hulk Hogan, and uh, I regret. I regret moving, even though I was nine years old. I was scared to death because Saunders Slaughter uh, got into a fight with one of the fans right behind me. But I, I still wish that I had stayed there because uh, so I, I would have been two inches away from Hulk Hogan. So I, I still, at at my age, I'm still re- I still regret that to this day. Yeah, I was gonna. That that's a pr- that's a big one. <laughs> I I feel I feel bad for you too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Um, so, um, what do you see yourself in like um, say five years from now? Five years from now, I definitely at some point I do see myself wrestling on TV for for a major company. Okay. Um, yeah, I would hope. I would hope by then, like, I definitely want to wrestle for Impact. That's something that's been uh, super important to me over the last year. So, okay, uh, yeah, I would definitely want to make sure that I've wrestled for Impact or even like WWE or an AEW. Uh, those okay. do interest me. Like, but clocks are also ticking. I'm not getting younger, so if it doesn't happen in in the next five years, it's not going to happen for me. So I do realize that as well. Okay, well, it, it will happen. It will happen. I, I have a, I have a very good feeling after, uh, after seeing you on Gut Check and, and watching your matches against like uh, Dukes, uh, no, Cody Diener, and what uh, Johnny Bravo had to say. I, I really have a good feeling that you're gonna appear on Impact uh, sooner than later, man. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if they, as soon as they come back, uh, they bring you on board because uh, you're, you're, like I said, you're, you're a tremendous talent, man. Well, thank you. My pleasure, man. My pleasure. So, last question, then I'll let you plug anything you want to plug. Uh, like any T-shirts, any merchandise. Uh, what do you enjoy most about being a pro wrestler? If you could, if you could pinpoint the one thing that you enjoy most about being a pro wrestler, uh, what would that be? Uh, my favorite part about being a pro wrestler is the experience. Like, I can't match anything in my life to the feeling that I get from a live audience like the like genuinely just like people talk about like the second you step through the curtain and how you can learn how to like learn how to make people react and be reacting to you and getting so excited to see you or fired up that you're about to wrestle like 
there is no no type of like feeling that that matches that that i've ever experienced in life so for me it's 100 percent. it's just feeding off the crowd and the energy of people like i i've always i've always been a people person and yeah i don't like i love i love a lot of different layers of wrestling like i love being at the merchandise table and just talking to fans and i love like just like the different messages that you get from fans and, and like, they just remind you like why you work so hard and think so much about this and dedicate so many of your thoughts and time of your life to doing these things. So it's like, it's super rewarding, but also like even I like get a message from, uh, from a guy like a couple weeks ago. And I, and he just, he just asked me if like, if I just do a little post wishing his son like happy birthday and like, He's, and then like the message that he sends me with like his, yeah, with like his son being so excited. And like when he turned nine, his name's Cameron, like little things like that. Okay. Like I, like growing up, I remember like, like that's exactly what I wanted as a kid. Like when Hulk Hogan sure. got injured because of earthquake, like I was one of those kids that mailed in and I got a postcard from Hulk Hogan. Oh, said, wow. Oh, wow. Like, yeah and so like like so i got a postcard saying like yeah keep like keep training saying your prayers brother and like like i still have that postcard to that day like i remember that from when i was a kid so for me like i genuinely like i just want to be in some way shape or form i also just want to be like that same type of role model so like whenever i see any kids like I'm always like, it's always a fist pound or I make them. And then if they're taking a picture, like, nope, we got to do the Tyler turbo flex or like a certain pose, like just to keep it light. And, and then they remember those sure. same things that, that I remember as a kid, like those same things that, that impacted me. So yeah, like anything about the interaction and just being able to feed off the people, that's 100% what I love about wrestling and why I do it. Wow, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. Actually, I had another question. I hope, uh, hope you don't mind. Uh, yeah. I want to ask you. You're the you're the cross uh, Crossfire Wrestling Heavyweight Champion. When when everything gets back to normal, uh, who's who's the number one contender for that belt? Uh, is there a match set up already for for that title? Um, are you and the number one contender. Yeah. So the number one contender for the Crossfire Heavyweight Championship is Congo Kong. So we were supposed oh, wow. to have a oh, match my gosh. on. Yeah. So we were supposed to have a match on the twenty second, I believe, of March. It was supposed to happen, and then, and then that got pushed. To, it was going to be April twenty sixth, so now it's going to get pushed again. So right now, I have no clue when that match is going to happen. But yeah, I'll be defending Crossfire Heavyweight Championship wow. against former Impact Wrestling superstar Congo Kong. So, so what's the game plan against Congo Kong, man? That 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 guy is very <laughs> very intimidating, man. <laughs> yeah, you're. It's one of those like you got to use your your athleticism and your speed. And then even get in as little bit of power as you can. So you kind of just like you hit them and move, hit them, move. And then if you hit them once, you try to hit them two or three times. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, you just got to keep keep trying to hit them, but also you still got to keep your distance because yeah, Absolutely. when you get a hold of you, it doesn't it doesn't tickle. Absolutely. That's for sure. <laughs> it doesn't tickle. It's not. A, and uh, try to avoid that top rope splash because uh, that. That that's gotta hurt, man. That that's definitely gonna hurt. If uh, have you ever been hit by that before? Have you ever faced him before? Or is this gonna be the first time? I've faced him before. I know I've I've wrestled him in a singles before at Crossfire, and I I think I've been in one or two multi man matches with him where it's like a six man tag. I can't remember if I've been hit. I don't think I've been hit with a splash. Maybe but. you have. You just forgot about it because it was it just knocked <laughs> you out, man. Yeah, <laughs> just like a pile driver. Just yeah destroys you <laughs> yeah man well tyler man i want to thank you so much. actually no before i before i say my goodbyes I, I i promise i will let you plug anything so if you have any merchandise or anything uh any social media you want to plug I, i'll let you do that right now yeah i've got um on instagram people can find me at tyler turva on twitter i'm at tyler turva then i also have a fan page on uh facebook as well listed as tyler turva so it's all first and last uh if people are interested in any any hats or shirts or eight by tens, uh, they can reach out to me. I've got all different shirts uh, and whatnot, and they can just private message me those things. So, yeah, definitely here for whatever they need. And if uh, 
they even just want to have a laugh, then they can give me a follow. I like to post the odd random thing that, like National Siblings Day, where it's uh, me and my brothers. I'll call yeah. it a macho. Man, so. Yeah, Hogan and Savage, your brothers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, I, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I, I think, uh, and I said it during the, I'll say, I said, I said it during the interview. I'll say it again. I think you're extremely talented. Uh, I definitely think you're going to be in Impact Wrestling um, this year when they come back. And um, I wish nothing but the best of luck. And and you said uh, you don't want to attend a WrestleMania until you're actually wrestling on a WrestleMania. And I, I, I do believe that's going to come true for you as well, my friend. Well, thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me, by the way. I appreciate it. This is a lot of fun. Anytime you want to come back, man, if you want to do this like three, four months down the road or or after you sign your Impact Wrestling contract, I'd, I'd love to have you back on, man. Sounds good. We'll do it again. All right, sounds good, man. Well, this has been Shooting Up North. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. Again, you can hear us on the Impact Lounge. And until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye.